All right, first of all, TGI Friday, happy Veterans Day to all of those who have served this country, are still serving it, especially our CPD members, whether you're deployed or here. Uh, we appreciate that sacrifice, and we will continue to support any way we can our men and women of the military. Um, let's move on to the elections of Tuesday. Obviously, the elections in this state didn't change much of anything. It's only highlighted the need and the path forward for this lodge to basically push for change within. We can no longer just depend on votes of changing the, the system as it is con currently constructed. We have to have like-minded individuals running for these offices, good quality candidates, law enforcement or otherwise, who understand law and order to take out the politicians who continue to get reelected to do nothing. I mean, let me just talk about this. Danny Davis gets reelected. What has Danny Davis done for the west side of Chicago? Can anybody please tell me? Absolutely nothing. Three decades plus, he's been an elected official, and the west side is as violent and underprivileged as it's ever been. Nothing, but yet keeps getting reelected. Then you have the other side of the coin, the politicians who literally keep trying to trade up. Chewy Garcia, who now gets reelected one day and the next day is announcing he's going to formally run for mayor. Well, if you really wanted to be mayor of Chicago, you should have re resigned your post and not even ran for re-election if you really believed in it, instead of having that parachute to land on. Far too often, politicians play that game all the time. Let me get re-elected and then run for something else, because I always got that to fall back on. I applaud politicians like a Ray Lopez who said, I will not be seeking re-election as an alderman, I'm going to run for mayor. That's how it's done. Uh, you, make, you make your bed and you pick, it, you pick a path and you go forward with it. Um, this system needs to change desperately for this state to survive. They can spin it all they want. This was never about abortion any way, shape, or form. It really wasn't. You would have had to not only win a couple seats, but win the majorities back for abortion to ever become an issue in the state of Illinois. That was never in jeopardy in this election cycle. There was no way the Republicans were going to ever win enough seats in the House or the Senate for that to become reality. But that's all they kept telling people. This is a very unsafe city. They want to talk about crime reduction and numbers going down. Nobody feels safe in this city or surrounding area. I can assure you of that. Just last night, 30 plus police cars chasing four carjackers for a carjacking that started on the north side of Chicago. Should we go on West Lawn, Chicago? Yesterday, last night, middle of the night. Some poor guy hears a noise outside, catalytic converter thieves, outside his window. He confronts them, tries to scare them off. What do they do? They proceed to start lighting up his house, firing 17 rounds into his house, almost killing him. But don't worry, crime is in a decrease. We're on the right path. They are so full of shit, it's not even funny. Um, we need change. We need serious change. The focus was always on municipal elections for 2023. I'm more than pleased that we have at least nine officers running for political office. Hopefully uh, they survive the ballot challenges that are sure to come, especially in some races specifically near and dear to some of the lifelong politicians in this city and their supporters who are going to do everything they can to knock potential challengers off the ballot. Um, when it comes to the election, I can tell you, this last weekend, I traveled to Youngstown, Ohio for a wedding for the Michigan State FOP President Mike Sauger. Um, it was a great time. Him and his wife, Lisa, are just amazing to see together, that kind of love and commitment. But I can tell you, uh, being in Youngstown, it got me thinking about I had to early vote before I left. And when I went to early vote, it was literally as simple as signing a digital basically screen on the front and within three seconds it was apparently verified by the election judge I was given a ballot to go vote it's that simple there is no ID yet we can tell you that within hours where a winning lottery ticket was sold anywhere in this country <laughs> within hours we can't even tell you who won in Arizona or Nevada yet um, or in that case even Illinois for that matter with uh, the Hastings Sheehan race which still has votes to be counted 
this isn't the way it was supposed to be ran, but it's intentionally ran this way for a purpose to basically allow fraud. I am not making any accusations of fraud in any of these races. I am simply saying the current system is flawed. There is no reason you should not have to show some form of ID to say that it is you. Nothing would have prevented me from walking to every different polling place and coming up with a name of a resident in that precinct and basically signing a name. And more than likely, it would not get challenged. I would have gotten a ballot and would have been able to vote. That's how ridiculously easy it is. It is never designed to be that easy. I can guarantee you the Democrats want it to be that easy. Both parties need to come together and have some common sense election rules and regulations going forward so that it is more secure. We know who is voting. Ballots, whether they're mailed in or not, should have some kind of tracing number on there. You should know where your ballot is at if you mail it in. That's not the case right now. Um, again, you can decide whether it's by design or not. I will tell you lastly, uh, when it comes to elections and the municipal elections, February 28th specifically, we are going to be asking our retirees to step up in mass. We have over 6,000 retired members that are Lodge 7 members still. We are going to come up with an incentive in order for you to sign up as either an election watch or election judge February 28th. Um, we need to make sure that our members get a fair shake in these elections coming up. So uh, stay tuned on how that pans out. But as I was talking about being in Youngstown, Ohio for a wedding last weekend, since I was so close, it kind of dawned on me that I was an hour away from Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh is the founding location of the FOP. So I decided to make the hour drive back east to, uh, to the spot where the FOP was founded on principles and in conversations at 107 Flower Street. I'm going to attach a little video clip that I filmed outside uh, that location on uh, Sunday, and uh, it'll be at the end of this video. Everybody, thank you. There is a general membership meeting Wednesday at noon. If you can make it, please attend. Have a safe weekend. Happy Veterans Day again. Over my shoulder, 107 Flower Street, where the Fraternal Order of Police began 107 years ago. Two Pittsburgh police officers met here nightly to just talk about what the latest was going on in the job and in the city. They knew they had to do something different because the politicians just didn't give a damn. And the only way to get their concerns addressed was to form a union. But they said, we can't call it a union because back then unions had a terrible reputation and they wanted to be taken seriously. So they came up with the name Fraternal Order of Police. Regrettably, 107 years later, even leaders in this union still refer to us as an organization and not a union. We are a union, founded on labor. This was all about labor rights and literally fighting for what's right, for working conditions, wages, etc., and benefits. There is no getting away from that. Sure, a large portion of this membership is fraternal and not labor, but this began as a labor union. It is still a labor union. Until we start calling ourselves a union repeatedly and not an organization, we are never, and I stress never, going to have the respect of the Democratic Party, particularly, who claim to be the party of labor. But yet, when it came to the windfall elimination provision, could only get 40 Democratic senators out of 50 to sign a sister bill to make that a reality. And then Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats shelved it anyway, even though the threshold number was reached in the House. They don't take us seriously. The only thing they understand are strong labor unions who literally can affect politics and the races that mean something in this country and individual states and locally speaking. We need to wake the hell up. We need to start fighting back and start calling ourselves a union, acting like a union, and getting in politics like other unions do. If you're not labor, you're fraternal, but this is still a damn union. Have a good night. Everybody be safe.